You're listening to This Week in America with Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Great to have you with us on the program, This Week in America. Information available at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Talking on the program, as mentioned, about the book Raising Kids That Succeed, How to Help Your Kids Overcome Life's Limitations and Think Their Way to Lifelong Success. The author is our guest on the program. Dr. Lynn Wicker is a certified speaker, trainer, and success coach. She has 30 years of experience in public education, holding various leadership positions in K-12 and higher education, including a director of a developmental research school. She's an international teacher of transformational leadership principles, uses her adding value lifestyle to connect with people, creating life transformations. Her education includes a doctorate in education from Florida State University, as well as the Harvard Graduate School of Education Superintendent Institute, the book we're talking about, Raising Kids That Succeed, How to Keep Your Kids or oh, Help Your Kids Overcome Life's Limitations and Think Their Way to Lifelong Success. Dr. Lynn Wicker, our guest on the program. Dr. Wicker, welcome to the show. It's great to have you with us. Thank you so much, Rick. This is one of my most favorite things to talk about. Well, and it's one of mine to ask questions about now that I've raised two. So it's like, okay, they seem to be doing okay. So, <laughs> so we did, okay, we'll see if we can help other people. If people are going like, wow, all these books out there about uh, about parenting, this one really is different, isn't it? A whole different approach and an approach that, that really works if you follow it. Yes, absolutely. I have people constantly saying, oh, I need your book. This is what's wrong with my kid. This is what he's doing. This is what she's doing. And I said, well, spoiler alert, it's not about your kids. <laughs> it's about who we are as parents. And what we bring to the table in that role is so important to parenting. Well, that is really interesting. And that's the, the unique approach on this. It goes back to us. And I guess maybe one of the starting points is I'm mentioning raising kids that succeed. Define success because so often we put our expectations on our children and we gauge their success based on what those are. Right, exactly. And so over, you mentioned I've been an educator for 30 years. And as you can imagine, Rick, all those years, so many families, so many kids, so many parents and situations. And because of that, I sort of took a lot of time to formulate what I really believe so strongly that success ultimately is. And ultimately, raising kids that succeed or that enjoy success in life means that as a parent, you fully resource them and equip them to positively navigate all of the challenges and obstacles that are coming their way in life. So notice I didn't say it's anything about a certain job or a career or a test score or a scholarship right. or, you know, any of those things. It's more about uh, two words, I think, resilience and persistence. Lynn Wicker, our guest on the program, Dr. Lynn Wicker. Her website is Lynn, L-Y-N-N, Wicker.com. The book, Raising Kids That Succeed, How to Help Your Kids Overcome Life's Limitations and Think Their Way to Lifelong Success. A lot of great information available as well as the website, LynnWicker.com. In the book, you write a lot about limiting beliefs, limiting beliefs in, in your life as a parent. Talk about those because those are really key to helping us understand how to be better parents. Yeah, absolutely. So in the book, I talk a lot about the difference between living intentionally, parenting intentionally, and sort of living and parenting on autopilot and how dangerous that can be. And what I mean by that is um, we all bring our own set of beliefs to the table as a person. Some of us had you know, wonderful childhoods, some less wonderful, some very challenging. And all of those things that happened to us as we grew up created a belief system that we have. And, and so a lot of those beliefs really tend to limit us. They limit our potential. They limit our perceptions of ourselves. And Rick, what I've seen to be true in my own life and in the lives of, of so many people is when we're just living on autopilot, those limitations, those beliefs that we have, we sort of just sort of let those drip over into our parenting and we sort of put that over on our children. And so having this way, this sort of system or commitment really to uncovering our belief system that might be limiting us, then it helps us to know how do we be more empowering 
and um, parenting our kids. So it's it's really a, a a wonderful way to approach parenting. How do we identify those? As you're talking, I'm thinking, boy, some of these uh, some of the beliefs that that are holding us back probably part of our what psychological DNA. We may not even know they're there. How do we identify these? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the first couple of chapters of the book, I talk about being intentional as a thinker. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. So we have to sit down and really do some intentional thinking about um, what do I believe? You know, what do I believe to be true about my abilities? Um, what are those old things still wandering around in my subconscious? You know, just to give you an example, a lot of people, um, you know, they have these things like I was never good at math or I was never good at sports, those kinds of things. And of course, those are kind of top of the waves. There can be so many more limiting beliefs we have that are very dangerous and, and very detrimental to who we are as individuals. But those are just a couple kind of top of the wave examples. And sometimes I've seen parents actually push those limitations off on their kids and say things like this, well, I was never good at math, so I don't expect my son or my daughter you know, to be either, when really there's no connection at all in that. It's, it's what we believe to be true. So we uncover those things by intentionally sitting down, um, making it a commitment to ourselves. And Rick, so important, simply increasing our awareness when we have thoughts that we can identify as really limiting us. And that's really a thinking habit that I encourage uh, my coaching clients to have. The book we're talking about is Raising Kids That Succeed, How to Help Your Kids Overcome Life's Limitations and Think Their Way to Lifelong Success, written by Dr. Lynn Wicker. Her website is lynnwicker.com. The book's available all across the country. Information on the book, of course, at her website, lynnwicker.com, and you can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. It's important, too, to identify the limiting beliefs of your children, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And we uh, we have to be good listeners, great listeners to do that. You know, over the years as a, as a principal and superintendent and certainly as a teacher, I would hear kids say things about themselves um, that really tells you a lot about what they believe to be true about their own limitations. So as a parent, you can be such an important role in your kids' lives by listening to what they say and then challenging those things. If you know that, you know, there's really no truth to it. Simple example, we hear kids say, you know, I don't have any friends or nobody likes me or, you know, those kinds of things and challenging those things and really having meaningful conversations with them uh, to help them see, well, you know, maybe that's not completely accurate. It can make a world of difference in what they believe to be true about themselves. How do we go about taking those limiting beliefs and turn them into empowerment? What, what do we do to go down that, that trail? Yeah, so that's the next step is after you are really fully aware and can really lean into your child's um, thinking and listen to them, and when you start challenging those limiting statements and beliefs they have, then your job as a parent is really to become their coach and to help them then turn those statements around into more empowering belief in themselves um, so, so that they don't sit there and just think, well, this is all there is. This is all I'm ever going to be. And, you know, Rick, we, we don't see ourselves typically as parents, as our kids coach. You know, we, we and I don't mean athletic coach. I right. mean coach in life, you know, to come alongside them and really give them new thoughts, um, challenge their old beliefs and, and, and really give them some great things to hold on to. And that's why it's so critical because it is a true statement that we cannot give what we do not have. So as parents, until we become aware of our own limitations and deal with those and show up as our best self in this role of parenting, it's pretty hard, if not impossible, to be a great life coach for our kids. You get a lot of information, feedback from observation in all of your years in working in education and, and parenting, and also from, from a survey that you did. Talk about that and what you found when you're, you're having people focus on these limiting beliefs and how to turn them around. Yeah, so interesting. I actually did an online survey, so it was all anonymous parents from a 
wide range demographic. And what I found was uh, I asked them what did they what were they most afraid of in being a parent and what did they worry the most about? There were a few other kind of open ended questions, but those were the two I paid the most attention to. And Rick, what I found out of almost 150 people that I surveyed, pa parents of kids of all age ranges, uh, they fell into four groups. One was uh, they were uh, worried about being a personal failure as a parent, failure uh, to not have success and happiness of their child. Thirdly, safety and security of their child. And fourth, negative outside influences. And I have to tell you, so, so interesting. At 64% out of those four things, 64% of the parents were most worried and most afraid of being a personal failure in their role as parent. And that really told me that there's so much work to do. You mentioned in your intro question, why are there so many parenting resources out there and yet still such a large margin of parents still so afraid and worried? And I think it goes back to this idea of our own ability to understand ourselves first, to feel that we are competent in our role as parent. And that is my complete journey and purpose in life is to help empower parents to know how to do this. And it's really not that difficult. Raising Kids That Succeed, the name of the book by Dr. Lynn Wicker, Raising Kids That Succeed, How to Help Your Kids Overcome Life's Limitations and Think Their Way to Lifelong Success. You talk about great parenting requires great thinking. We've discussed that. You also talk about great parenting is intentional. And that may sound simple enough and you're thinking, well, yeah, of course it is. But how many parents really are intentionally parenting their children? Yeah, and part of that, too, is I mentioned the autopilot versus intention. Exactly, yes. Yeah, and a great example is when we make decisions about our kids or we give our kids an, an answer to something they want to do, we make a decision, um, how much time do we intentionally reflect on the outcome we got from our, our decision or our response or answer to them, our interactions with them? Um, uh, one of my mentors, uh, leadership guru, John Maxwell, says that experience is not the best teacher, but evaluated experience is the best teacher. So I, I'm a strong advocate as a parent to intentionally reflect on your decisions. And I can promise you a lot of them aren't going to turn out the way you thought. You're not going to get the reaction or the response or the outcome. And that's OK. The idea is to learn from it and, and to next time you know, gain more intuitiveness about it and get the outcome you want. So you can't do that without being intentional about it. I mentioned in the beginning the adding value lifestyle. What is that? Well, adding value is an attitude, really. It's, it's one of service. It's an attitude that says, who am I going to come across today? Who am I going to interact with? Um, and, and when I do those things, what can I intentionally do to make that person's day better? How can I make them be the special person I already know that they are? And Rick, I can tell you that if, as a parent, having the heart of a servant and wanting to add value to your kids in a way that's not superficial, it's not just heaping things uh, into their life, but rather equipping and resourcing them and, and taking the time out of our busy day and schedule to do that because they are our greatest resource and they are our legacy. So uh, I've really adopted this as my lifestyle to add value to whomever I come in contact with. But in a role as a parent, wow, it is so critical that we make that decision up front concerning our kids and teenagers especially. Time going by way too quickly. We will have Dr. Wicker back in the program. A couple minutes in the show, and it's interesting in talking about limiting beliefs. If we listen to our, our child, we can pick up on what some of their limitations are, that self-imposed limitations. What is the role of social media? And I shouldn't do this with two minutes left, and I'm not jumping on the everything in the world goes back to the, the social media, all the, all the problems in the world. But they can engage in limiting, uh, you know, their, their belief behavior, and, and we don't know about it because they're communicating with other children who may be reinforcing that. What role does social media play, and how should we deal with that? 
Yeah, I think it goes back to parents being involved. You know, yes, it's there. It's those challenges and obstacles I mentioned in my definition of success. But as a parent, you know, knowing what they're being exposed to is so critical. And I can tell you that it's very real. It's very out there. Middle school kids, teenage kids, especially there. But um, if you keep having those conversations with them, even if they've been devastated by something someone said or posted in social media, keep those lines of communication open. And, you know, being the biggest influencer in their life is a tough job when they get to be a teenager. So really keeping those communication lines open is so critical to combating any detrimental effects they might be having through social media. It's interesting. One thing you talk about, and we did at the beginning of the program, and we'll close with this, is raising su successful kids. It's not about fixing your kids. It's about your own po personal growth as a parent. Interesting, it starts with you as a parent. The book is called Raising Kids That Succeed, How to Help Your Kids Overcome Life's Limitations and Think Their Way to Lifelong Success. Lynn Wicker, Dr. Lynn Wicker, our guest in the program. Her website is lynnwicker.com. Books available all across the country, information at her website, and you can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Dr. Wicker, a pleasure having you on the program. Look forward, we have much more to talk about. We will do that soon. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. Thank you, Rick, very much. You're listening to This Week in America, website thisweekinamerica.us. Stay tuned, we're back after these important messages. 